62% of all small businesses that were in some sort of difficulty uh, could not get any money from the banks. And some of them, when I was mayor, I had business upon business would truck into you. Some were looking for as little as 5,000 to 10,000 to keep themselves afloat. And the interesting point is this, that um, if you look at the cost of a small business, before they even pay a worker, before they pay the, the, the average overheads of electricity and so on, that I recall in Waterford one small business was paying 38,000 rent plus 10,000 rates. That is unsustainable. No effort has been made to, for, for, for rent review, rate review in small business. And I would say this, that out of the 420,000 people that are unemployed, we tend to forget the big factory closes and we lose 100 jobs or 200 jobs. There's an outcry. But 10 to 12 to 20 small businesses can go in a day, which will put maybe 30, 40, 50 people on, on uh, uh, the dole queues. And I would say this, Sean, that if you look at it, to put somebody on the dole, it costs between 20 and 25,000 euro a year. You're talking about um, paying staff redundancy and all the payments that go with it. Are we saying that we have no thinking outside the box where we can even subsidise the small right. government and are missing all of the evidence that's been put before? We, we need to create more jobs and invest in small businesses. But right now we need to preserve the businesses that we have. Now, if you speak to any small business, and I speak to them every day of the week, they talk about their overheads, they speak about their rates, they speak about their rent, the upwardly spiral of rents, and they speak about not being able, they're squeezed from three sides. A, they're squeezed from the banks that they can't get money. B, they're squeezed from the local authority with rates, and they're squeezed again by private investors who will not reduce the rents. There's one particular business in Waterford, uh, 38,000 euro rent. They asked the guy that owned the place, would you reduce it by 2,000 euro or we go bust? But he said, if you have to go, you've got to go. We've introduced no legislation. We've done nothing to protect the businesses that are there. And could I just finally say that the, the, where there are all sorts of places, people don't have money to spend. So we have to preserve the businesses that are there. Or we're going to face another 1,500 right. closures again. So so you say, point, you're in charge charge of the banks now. How is it you haven't been able to do any deal with the banks? Uh, introduce any legislation with the banks that would force them to lend money to small businesses. But if you, so if, you, if you write a contract uh, to take out a lease on a premises in Waterford, that's a contractual arrangement. Absolutely. Well. Now yes. it's not easy to disentangle that in one fell swoop and say that the government has loads of money to give the banks. Uh, well, the, okay, we're talking about the banks saving money to small businesses, yeah. not the government giving no, money to the banks. That's what they're going to carry. Yeah, yeah. What's your view? Because uh, again, you're part of a, a group of, I think, 19 in the technical group, the five from the United Left Alliance, plus 14 independents who could. Uh, pack uh, quite a powerful punch in putting forward a candidate. There's a diversity of views there too, Sean, as well. Oh, um, but anyway, well, first of all, I think that a debate is warranted on the value or the necessity of having a president in the first place. I think we don't seem to have done that in the country over the last number of years, particularly under the present economic uh, situation. Having said that, uh, Mary McAleese, the last two presidents, have done our country proud, I would say that, but I think a debate is warranted. And all the predecessors as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, um, um, my inclination would be, I've met uh, um, Sean Gallagher and I meeting David Norris on Wednesday. I think it would be regretful if David Norris was not a candidate, uh, particularly with the media attention that was feisted upon him over the last uh, number of weeks. I think he's a man of integrity. Um, I think he has a great cultural and uh, intellectual history of the country. Um, uh, my inclination now would be to support David Norris, although I would acknowledge uh, the integrity of the I think he's whether he's looking for a Iraqis nomination or he seems to be going the council route. He has his super. I, ha I, I, ha I have no idea. All I know is I'm meeting him on Wednesday, um, and I would wish him well. I think because of the unwarranted media attention that was placed on him. And, and by the way, there's an opinion. Well, well, he did draw a fair amount well, of money. One, 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 one wonder has been quite straight about it. If if if, if he wasn't homosexual, uh, would have all of these questions have been asked? Were the same questions asked to other candidates? They were not. Yeah, was there any other candidate asked, for instance, their view on prostitution? Should it be uh, legalised? Should it be monitored or what? They, 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 were, they weren't. So, like, I think let's call a spade a spade. I think uh, some of the media attention was unfair. Some of it, not all of it. But you're in politics, but you have to take... I but assume, uh, John Halligan, that you, uh, you want David Norris elected. You obviously want Michael Deegan elected, like Sean Sherlock, but slightly different No, no, sorry, you. what I said was I'd like to see David Norris in the field. Okay, I think sorry. he warrants... Okay, I'll meet him on Wednesday. But, but what I like about it is that he joined fine game, not because of the ideology, because he would get a nomination for the president. I think people would see through it.